I'm Andrew Gillis with Sepro Urban Mining. Today I'm going to be talking about wet treatment of incinerator bottom ash. If you're watching this video, you may be familiar with the fact that most bottom ash is traditionally treated in a dry process. Uh, however, uh, wet processing has become of much greater interest as some jurisdictions uh, mandate wet processing, um, mandate better use of the uh, aggregate or the slag tailings at the end of the process and as some of the metals become more valuable and efficiency becomes uh, efficiency of metal separation becomes very important so i'm going to walk you through uh, a wet separation process uh, in a flow sheet and try to give people a general overview of what wet processing is all about and the unit operations that are used in it so let's have a quick look here. First we'll start with just a view of what a wet processing treatment plant looks like. So, and we'll describe these unit operations in a bit more detail, but over here we have a, a jig. Before this is a magnetic separator, a jig for the coarse fraction, fine slag treatment plant for the minus two millimeter um, hydrocyclone and you know, water treatment system and what's not shown here are uh, eddy currents for the coarse heavy non-ferrous as well as the decanter centrifuge for dealing with the slimes, very, very ultrafine particles. So let's take a look at the flow sheet and walk through this in a bit more detail. So here we have a few uh, different processes that we'll call out, but maybe we'll start here by talking about the infeed to the system. So nominally, we'll have 0 to 40, 0 to 50 millimeter bottom ash coming into the process. Uh, ahead of this will be a magnetic separator that's just not shown here, but that'll take out the coarse magnetics, and there'll be a screen as well taking out any oversize, and that will just go uh, either into a crusher and then be recycled back in or into a stockpile um, to be periodically crushed and then brought back in. So minus 40 or minus 50 millimeters, uh, this will report to a jig, which is the primary separation device for the coarse material. The things to note here are that there are three streams coming out. There's a float stream, which will remove, uh, let's just say, light plastics, organics, wood. Well, wood shouldn't be there. It should be pretty easily combusted. But, you know, the light, the light plastics, kind of the non, uh, the things that may not have been combusted in the incinerator just due to inefficiency or whatever. But anything with a, you know, SG less than 1.0 should be floating here. And it'll get collected in a float spin. The next thing we have is we've got a light stream. And so this will be the lower density material, the slag, the mineral, glass. And then we have the heavy non-ferrous that comes out here onto a... So this will be the sink. So anything that's um, higher density than uh, the mineral slag fraction, and this should be... Um, basically all the heavy non-ferrous. It'll go into a dewatering screen and then, uh, sorry, not three, four products. And then we also have the undersize. And in this process, this is the minus two millimeter material is going to be going to the undersize of the jig and moving on to the fine separation process. So what we have in the heavy non-ferrous is the plus two minus basically 40. And, you know, we can kind of do whatever with this. So either, you know, this can be a product if somebody wants it. Um, generally what will happen here is this will go over, this will report to eddy current separation for removal of aluminum. Uh, perhaps stainless, and we can do this with whatever um, size fractions uh, 
somebody wants. I mean, depending on who the customers are, which smelters you're selling to, what the feed composition is of the IBA, um, you know, there are a variety of different decisions that can be made on this, splitting it into different size fractions, um, and, you know, intensity of eddy current separation, just to make sure we're getting the most out of this, out of that product. Let's just clean this up. Okay, so then we said we've got the the 2 to 40 or 2 to 50 heavies going this way, 2 to 40, 2 to 50 lights going this way. And then again, so the lights coming out here will go on to dewatering screens. Uh, primarily, you've got then this 2 to 40 or 2 to 50 aggregate product that's coming out. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in a few minutes. Um, let's talk about the fines. So we've got the minus 2 millimeter going up here this way to a hydrocyclone and then into the fine slag treatment plant. And the fine slag treatment plant is made is a process made up of a few different gravity separation modules. There's a specific separate video on that. Uh, so if anyone's interested in learning more about the FSTP, they can watch that video. But the outcome here is basically that you're producing um, fine heavy non-ferrous the minus two millimeter heavy non-ferrous. Um, there's an oversize for any misplaced particles and then a fine ferrous bin. There's magnetic separation in here as well. That light material also goes to a dewatering screen and this dewatering screen here. And then we have a 100 micron to two millimeter product. Okay, why is this 100 micron to two millimeter? This hydrocyclone has removed the fines. And then these go through a water treatment system and over here to a either filter press, or in this case, it's a dewatering centrifuge um, to produce a basically a slimes product. So what's nice about this? There are a few things. Um, we end up removing the slimes, which are generally what needs to be removed anyway to create an aggregate product. So, you know, generally the minus 63 or so, depending on the jurisdiction, will cause problems with aggregate spec. Um, and we've removed that here in the water treatment system. So you get an, a mixed aggregate product that's basically, a, you know, roughly 70, 100 micron to 50 millimeter that can be blended in different ways to meet different specifications. Um, we've removed the metals. We've especially removed the fine metals, you know, and the fine metals have a lot of surface area. So you can often get into trouble uh, with leachable metals if those are left in. So the fine slag treatment plants done a good job of removing those leachable fine metals with a lot of surface area. Uh, we've got the coarse out over here along with the aluminum. So ideally, and, you know, we've also got the floats out to so the plastic contamination. So we've got a, a good mix of products here where we have a coarse, non-ferrous, heavy non-ferrous metals, and then these can be split into different size fractions and, and you know work on the aluminum or whatever else. We've got a fine heavy metal concentrate, which often contains uh, you know a good quantity of precious metals, gold, silver, platinum, palladium. And now we've also got a washed and fairly clean aggregate product here at the back end too. And then the only thing we're left to, to deal with, you know, to the extent that we can blend it back in or we have to find, you know, disposal for it is the slimes, but that's only in proportion to the amount of slimes that are coming into the front end of the plant. So it's not necessarily a lot left to deal with here. We've got the vast majority of the infeed IBA uh, dealt with in either profitable or cost neutral um, cost neutral streams. So that's the overview of the flying the wet treatment for IBA. Um, if you have any further questions, uh, please feel free to visit urbanmining.seprosystems.com. If you want to learn more about the fine slide treatment plant, please watch our video on that. And if you have any questions, uh, comments, please feel free to get a hold of us, um, and we're happy to help. Thanks for watching.